right all right today i want to start out looking at the spy weekly chart because today at the rate we're going if we close the week above 453 then we're breaking the march 2022 high and from today's close we are only about five percent away from the previous all-time high yet all year long the majority have been bearish and have been expecting the stock market to crash which is a constant reminder why it's so important to follow the price action chart and not your own bias we're about five percent away from all-time highs and if you've been bearish this entire year that means you've likely missed this entire entire rally and now it's getting more and more difficult for you with your bias to decide how to buy back into this market now there's always going to be people that come up with a bearish narrative and the next bearish narrative you're going to hear is that we're simply coming all the way back up towards the previous all-time high and then we're coming all the way back down to the October lows. Nobody knows where the market is going, and if somebody tells you this is going to happen, they are completely guessing. We need everything to be proven by the price action and the current trend, and right now the current trend and the price action are still bullish. So even if that is going to happen, we have no evidence it's going to happen and it's completely subjective to say that it will happen. So right now, all that we know is that SPY is continuing to look bullish and it's continuing to climb towards the previous all-time highs and it's a bull trend until it's not. Looking at the daily chart of SPY, we can see that we did close outside the upper Bollinger Band and because we are breaking through that critical resistance zone that I gave you between 448 and 453, we are likely getting more short squeezing. The short squeezing is going to continue to occur above SPY 453, but there's always the chance after a short squeeze, and we talked about this scenario last night, that it's just a liquidity grab to get all of the shorts to cover, and then we can still come down here and fill this gap at 443. But in order to trade that idea, you need a pivot in the price action, and if you looked at today's price action, there was no evidence of a pivot. A pivot means we need to see lower highs and lower lows on a smaller time frame so that we have a risk level to manage from and we're just not getting that. So while it is likely that gap is going to get filled, we have no idea when. And yes, it is possible we just continue to push towards the next price target and march higher on higher lows and higher highs and then go fill that gap at a later date. So be aware of that gap, but if you're going to trade down to the gap, then you need the price action to show a pivot, and we're not getting that yet, so there's no reason to short the bull trend until we see that pivot. So on SPY above 453, the next price target higher is going to be 460, and if we see a high volume rejection instantly with tomorrow's price action, then it's possible this was just a little bit of a false breakout, and it's still possible we're going to lower prices to finish the week, but again, let the price action prove it. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 0.82% today and the triple Qs are pushing towards our higher price targets at 387 and above 387 we're looking for 393 and if we break through 393 we're going all the way back up to the previous all time high. Just like SPY we have gaps to fill to the downside on the triple Qs but we need a price pivot and we're going to manage risk after we get a pivot from that pivot high and then we can try to short down towards the gap fills at 374 and just below 369. This is still a bull trend as long as we're forming higher lows and higher highs, so even if we get a pullback, we are still expecting higher low from it that is going to lead to another higher high. In the Dow Jones, we had the bull breakout today going up 1.08%, and this is an extremely bullish breakout because this is a high volume breakout above that critical resistance at 346. And go to my weekend weekly chart analysis and you are going to see why this is such a major critical breakout of resistance. From here, that means we're likely going all the way back up to the previous all-time highs with the next resistance on the way there at 353. And anytime you get a breakout, it's always possible you retest that breakout before you resume higher. So if we start to get a pullback, we're looking for critical support between 343 and 346. But we really just need to hold above 346 so that gap may stay open until we go to higher prices. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 1.23% today. And again, if you watch the weekend weekly chart analysis, this should be no surprise because I've been talking about how bullish the small caps are. And I said the next likely target was going to be between 195 and 198. And so far, that is exactly where we see price hitting today. Just like every other index that I talked about, if you want to short and you want to try to trade down for these gap fills, you need to wait for a pivot in the price action. And right now, IWM is bullish above the breakout at 195, which means we can start marching higher towards 198 and then into the 200s. If we get a pivot, then we're looking for stronger support down here between 190 and 191, and we're bullish as long as we're above 188. On the RK ETF, we are 0.36% today, getting very close to the price target just below 51. But as I've said, with the bull breakout of bear market resistance, it's possible we backtest the breakout. So at any point, it's possible that RK can pull all the way back down towards 46 
before resuming this bull trend to higher prices. It doesn't mean we need to, but it's very common and it does validate the breakout because at any point, if we slice back down through all of this support, this is obviously a false breakout and it does not guarantee the bear market is over. It is just the first step of ending the bear market and we could be heading back into a bull market in the ARK ETF. On the VIX, we were down 1.41% and the VIX is still telling us very low fear environment, but also keep in mind this also can lead to complacency. And these bull trends, although they are very strong on the triple Qs, they are looking a little overextended. So at any point, it's possible the VIX starts spiking back out, which is going to be evident if we see the VIX spiking above 15. Until that happens, there's no reason to say that we're going to see fear and panic. And it does tell us we're likely going to continue to stay in the bull trend. On Bitcoin, we're currently down about 1.14% and we're at the bottom of the bull flag right here at 29,500. And that means if we break down below it, we're likely going down towards that support at 28,000. And that could mean we're breaking down bearishly out of the bull flag, which is possible because not all bull flags have to break out bullishly. However, if we break above 31,000 and we get a high volume buying event out of the bull flag, then we'll be looking for the upside price target at 35,000. On Tesla stock, we were up 1.02% today and intraday we did hit the price target at 295 and tomorrow after the bell we do have earnings. So what I suggest in Tesla now that we're reaching resistance and we have a gambling event, which is essentially a coin flip through earnings, I suggest locking profits and just being patient until we see what happens after earnings. If you're long term bullish on Tesla and you don't want to sell your position, at least consider taking some partial profits. And then after earnings, we can see what the price action does and adjust accordingly. Above 295, though, we will get a breakout and the next upside target is up there right around 312. And we're bullish as long as we're above the breakout at 274 with other support levels right around 282 and the gap fell at 264. On Apple stock, we were down 0.13% today, struggling to break out above the previous high, which is at 194, but we still have the valid upside target at 197.5 as long as we have the bull trend and we do have a gap to fill down here right around 191. So the easiest way to play Apple is stay bullish above 190, get more bullish if we break through 194 and get more risk off if we break down below support at 190. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, as I continue to tell you, this is a bull trend until it's not. And even if you think we can't go higher, the stock market couldn't care less what you think and the stock market couldn't care less what I think. So whether or not you think these valuations are fair or you don't think we can go any higher, the market is going to do whatever the market wants to do. The bears have been wrong all year long, so if that's not evidence enough to block out the noise and follow the chart, I don't know what is. You can choose to follow people that are continually wrong, or you can choose to follow the chart and then have the odds stacked in your favor. I choose to follow the chart and I follow the price action and the trend, and that is why we have been absolutely crushing this market this year. If you want to come crush the market with us, you can join Bank Trade Alerts or the Stocks Channel Discord server, and you can find out more information how to join either service by clicking on the links below. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.